This video shows you how to write block code that uses this sensor located at the top of the micro bit and it's disguised as you can see as the micro bit logo. The sensor uses the conductivity of the human body to recognize touch. It's called a capacitive touch sensor and is the same type of sensor that's used for smartphones, tablets, gaming devices, and other electronics that require a higher level of accuracy. The project itself requires no coding experience and no experience with the microbit other than knowing how to plug it into your computer and download code. Although you can actually do this without a microbit, you can do it all on the simulator in the Make Code framework. This project does, however, require a version 2 microbit. For more information on capacitive touch sensors and how they work, check the notes below for a link to a blog post. There's also a link to the blog post that accompanies this video. My name is Amy and I am the founder of Wonkits. I create resources and projects for educators teaching programming to middle and high school students. So let's get started. I'm going to click on the micro bit in the middle of the screen and then click on new project and I'm going to name my project Touchy and then click create. We don't need the forever block, so I'm going to drag that into the trash, but we will need the on start block later on, so we'll get to that in a bit. We do need an event. Block coding is an event driven language, and events are considered inputs. So we go to the input category to find events, scroll down to the version 2 events, and look for the on logo pressed. Click on that, and it goes, um, and a copy goes to the screen. Now the press button you can see has a down arrow by it, and if you click on that you can see the other options that are available. Right now we're going to stick with the pressed option, but we will use some of the others to see how they work. Okay, now we need an action for our event, and we're going to use music. So I'm going to click on the music button, or category, and then I'm going to click on play tone under the tones and drag that inside of the logo pressed, on logo pressed. This is set to middle C, I'm just going to leave it to that. I'm going to change the beat to two beats for when it plays. You can see that when we added that to our event block, uh, the simulator added uh, an externally attached speaker. This assumes that we have an external speaker that we're attaching, but we're going to use the speaker available in the version 2 micro bit. And you can see this has version 2 written up here too. Now let's go back and look at this play block again. It has a until done uh, text at the end, and you can see that with the down arrow there, that implies it has more options. If we click on that, we can see the other options, but we're just going to leave it be until done. What that means basically is it's going to process this action all the way until it's done before it does anything else. So let's test this on the simulator. So I'm going to go ahead and press the logo and the tone plays. Let's test a long press on it and see if it if it plays the middle C. And you can see I'll click on this and you can see long press is one of the options. So I'm just going to click on it and hold it for a bit and then let go and nothing happens. So there's a difference between the press and the long press. OK, now let's go ahead and duplicate this. I'm just going to click on it and duplicate it. You could drag a new one out if you want. And you can see it's grayed out, and that's because this one also has the pressed option selected. I'm going to change this to touched. And then I'm going to change my tone to the D above middle C, and we'll leave it for two beats. And once again, we're just going to ignore this option for this particular exercise. Now let's touch the, or let's press the, the logo again. Okay, so if I did a long press, it just acts as if it's touching it. If I touch and release, it acts like it's touched, and then it's released, so that's a pressed. Okay, let's do one more, and we'll add the long press this time. So I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to change the type of event that we're looking for to long pressed. And I'm going to change the note to the B below middle C. And we'll have it play for, we'll leave it for two beats. Okay, now our micro bit simulator has grayed out, and sometimes it does that. And all you need to do is click the play button if it does that. So now we're going to press and release, and it plays the middle 
and it plays the D rather and then the middle C. Now let's press it, plays our D and hold it, and you can hear it's now playing the low B. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is test this on our micro bit itself. But to do that, remember I said that this is set up as if it has an external uh, speaker attached to it. We have to tell it that it's going to use the internal speaker, not an external speaker. So the way we do that is we go into the music category and scroll down to version 2 commands. And at the very bottom, there is a set built-in speaker. Click on that. Um, and this, what, we're going to turn this on. And we're going to turn this on in the on start. So drag it into on start and switch it to on. Now let's go ahead and download our code. So click on download. Next. And um, I never pair the files just because I have a lot of micro bits. So I download as a file. And then make sure I have my micro bit selected and download the code. And you can see the back of the micro bit blinking. It should be downloaded now. And let's go ahead and press. And you can see that the sound works on the micro bit as it did in the, in the simulator. So that's it for this video. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments below. I appreciate your watching my videos and it would really help me if you gave it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching.